In this series of videos you have seen how to create light and strong body parts of complex shape, from a photograph or sketch to a finished metal coated composite part. In this video we will look at how to plate copper parts with nickel to give them even more awesome protective properties. Likes and comments below, so we begin. In the last video we discussed how to coat composite parts with a layer of copper. Such parts already look cool and have high wear resistance compared to other coatings such as paints, varnishes or epoxy resin, which allows the use of such parts as a functional plate of a protective suit. The disadvantages include the rapid oxidation and tarnishing of copper. Therefore, usually a copper layer is used as an intermediate for the subsequent application of nickel and chromium, metals that are resistant to oxidation and have even more perfect anti-corrosion properties. Nickel fits well on copper layer or on other metals, so if you miss the previous path on applying the copper layer, then check them out. When preparing the copper layer, it is worth considering that the nickel layer will be much thinner than copper, so the copper coating must be brought up to the quality and texture that you expect to get in the end. After giving the surface the texture that suits you, glue to the inside of the part the road on which it will be fixed in galvanic bath. Then solder several contacts on the inside to evenly distribute the current over the surface. It doesn't need such a bunch of contacts as graphite part, because copper, unlike graphite, is an ideal conductor. After preparing the pot, degrease all surfaces with alcohol and proceed to prepare the solution. There are several recipes for nickel plating solution and it all depends on whether you are lucky to get the main component – nickel sulfate. Unlike copper sulfate, it is not sold in garden stores, it costs more and is used only in electroplating and metalworks. And this is exactly the reason why I couldn't nickel plate the copper parts made two years ago. First we will get the recipe if you are lucky and then the fallback option if not very. Here is a recipe for electrolyte for nickel plating per 1 liter. It includes only 6 components and is even easier to prepare than copper plating electrolyte. First we measure 200 grams of the main component and source of metal ions – nickel sulfate. Then add 30 grams of boric acid to the nickel. We also measure 5 grams of sodium fluoride, 5 grams of table salt and 1.5 gram of formalin. So now we get a dry mixture, into which we pour the heated distilled water to the mark of 1 liter. After that, mix the components so that they dissolve without sediment and pour the finished electrolyte into 5 liter bottles through the coffee filter or non-woven material. After preparing 1 liter of solution, I recommend nickel plating a small part, make sure everything works well and then move on to making a commercial scale solution for larger parts. If you notice that the nickel plated part is taking too long, then it will be possible to slightly increase the concentration of solution by reducing the amount of water. But overall this recipe works great. In the case that nickel sulfate couldn't be obtained, then the electrolyte prepared with white vinegar, table salt and nickel plates. One tablespoon of salt is added to one liter of vinegar and nickel plates are lowered into the jar with the solution one of which is connected to the positive and the other to the negative. We apply current to the plates and after 20-30 hours, depending on the thickness of the metal, the anode plate dissolves, the solution turns green and after filtering, such an electrolyte can be used as the first option. The problem is that in order to achieve the same concentration of nickel ions as in the first recipe, you need to spend a lot of time, electricity and nickel plates. This option is ok for small DIY experiments, but to cover a large area it is better to try to get all components from the first option. Now nickel plates will act as anode material, which are three times more expensive than copper plates of the same size, but remember that the nickel layer is several times thinner than copper, so these plates will last for a long time. Drill the holes in the plates for hanging, wrap them with a filter made of non-woven material or coffee filter and make a hook from nickel plated paper clips. Remember that for the purity of the solution, in electroplating it is better to avoid the participation of foreign metals in the reaction. 
fix the part and the anode plates in galvanic bath. When nickel plating the requirements for the volume of the bath, the location of the plates and positioning of the details are not so strict as when covering the graphite surface with copper. Due to the low resistance of copper, the surface is covered quickly and evenly in any case. Heat the electrolyte to 30-40 degrees Celsius using an aquarium heater or simply in a water bath. Fill in the electrolyte so that it covers the plates and the part with a margin, connect the negative to the part, positive to the anode plates, apply current and note the time. The nickel deposition rate at an electrical density of 1 to 2 amp per square decimeter is about 1 micrometer per minute. On average, no more than 20-30 microns are applied, that is, the reaction time is only 20-30 minutes. Compared to copper plating, nickel plating usually occurs without any problems. The maximum you can help is sometimes to tap on the details to get rid of adhering air bubbles, which can also be solved by steering the electrolyte with a pump. Upon completion of the coating, turn off the current, take out the part and evaluate the quality of the layer. Usually the surface is covered smoothly and evenly. Wash the part in soapy water, remove the rod and contact wires and, if necessary, proceed to polishing. Polishing paste will remove stains and darkening, which sometimes occurs after nickel plating, but retains the texture that the copper part had. According to classical technology, after that the parts are covered with a layer of chromium, but for now I settled on the nickel layer. Firstly, because chrome plating requires even more hard to reach components. And secondly, after covering my own parts, I rewatched the first part of Iron Man for the thousands of time, and it seems to me that the coating of the Mark II suit looked more like nickel than chrome. Therefore, this coating is completely suitable for my project. Let's briefly go over the main steps of the whole process. With the help of 3D modeling from photographs, we get a 3D model of the desired part as close as possible to the original. With a smartphone and 3D scanning application, we create a virtual model of our body, which we can use for virtual fitting of parts or print a scale model for a more convenient development of the elements of the suit with the possibility of accurate scaling to real dimensions. With 3D printing and a little printer upgrade, we can quickly print thin, light and cheap part matrices with a minimum consumption of plastic and electricity. By reinforcing such a matrix with composite materials, fiberglass, carbon fiber, Kevlar or a combination, we achieve any ratio of weight, strength and elasticity of parts. Using measurements of the hardness and protective properties of various materials, we choose the optimal coating based on the operating conditions of the part. Finally, electroplating creates a hard shell that is scratch resistant, also protect the part from delamination. Thus, all technology is like the assemble of a toy constructor. At each stage, it is possible to choose the optimal properties of materials, at the same time, the general sequence of manufacturing the part doesn't change and doesn't become more complicated. Also note that this method of manufacturing parts with complex geometry much less demanding on the skills of the manufacturer than other methods. Even for manual production of a cardboard model of a similar part, more skills and calculations are needed. Not to mention the manufacture of such complex geometric products by welding. The most complex processes in this technology, for example, the creation of matrix and the creation of a metal layer, occur in the background without your participation. In fact, if you already have a 3D model, then all the works come down not to creating a part requiring high qualification, but for processing, priming, grinding, lamination and other much simpler steps. But in the end, with only a few original images, we get a light, strong and wear-resistant part that looks just like we want it to. I have never seen anyone use this combination of modeling, 3D printing, composite materials and electroplating, even more so to create large functional parts. Therefore, I tried to describe the entire workflow in as much detail as possible, which I have devoted the last two years to perfecting. Considering the excellent properties that this material processes and the easiness of its manufacturing technology, I hope that now many of you will be able to use it in your projects to create body parts. 
If you have questions about aspects of this technology, please ask them in the comments. If this video and this playlist were helpful to you, click the likes, share it with a friend and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next videos. Good luck with your own projects and see you soon!